In this video, we will learn how I design my test cases with the five black box testing techniques. All right, so let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy and we are going to discuss about the black box testing technique. This is really, really important interview question also, especially for fresher as well as experienced person. They should know about this five important black box testing technique and how do I leverage this technique to create test cases, right? I'm going to discuss about this. All right. So first one, uh, why? Uh, first of all, let's discuss about importance of test design, right? Uh, so let me zoom out a little bit for this. Okay let's make it 150 on this okay so that you guys can see properly okay first of all uh just to give you a point right it's a imperative that the test cases are well designed it's really really important that you design your test cases very well right and if you know 100 percent functional coverage uh is uh, so whenever you write test cases right you are basically increasing your co coverage right so that bugs are not getting leaked so make sure guys uh, even if you are working in startup, right? Make sure you are creating test cases and writing out, writing out somewhere in, even if you are writing in Excel, right? Please write it down because these test cases will help you to showcase your work as well as they will help you to find the bugs also. Okay. So make sure you do that. All right. So let's quickly jump into the, uh, what other different techniques that you can use to design your test cases, right? So many times this is very important. Uh, people ask you this question, which is uh, what exactly is a boundary value analysis and how do I design the test cases around it? How do I use this technique? Okay, very simple. Uh, it's basically in involves it basically involves around the mix maximum and the minimum values around the boundaries. Okay, so if you see this diagram, right? Let's uh, let's make it small. Uh, let already right. so here here is the if first one let me give yellow this is your inputs and this is your boundaries a and b are your boundaries and so for example let's take an example it's very simple uh, suppose there is a text field this is a text field where you can enter your username okay you have seen this many times now if you you can enter here they are saying you can enter the value between 1 to 10 right so what are the cases? What are the different cases? The boundary cases basically says that uh, you can have test uh, zero as your boundary, one as a boundary and two. You don't have to test for three, four, five, six, seven because they do, they will work. Mostly, if you see as this, basically this technique assumes, it basically assumes if you see developer will make mistake at the boundaries. This actually assumes the things. Okay, So every technique basically assumes something. If you see here, right, it basically assumes that the, at the boundaries, the there will be errors. Okay, because uh, if I if two is working fine, then nine will work also fine because those are very similar and they are not around the boundaries. Okay, so this is actually the boundary value. I hope this is clear. So what you will do is you will basically create a boundary for this and boundary for this. So zero, uh, so less than this is zero, greater than one is two. So this is your first test cases. So you will test with the zero input, one input, and two. So you have three test cases now available right and three test cases here the total number of cases six so six test cases which will basically you are using boundary value analysis and you're done okay let's move on to the equivalence partition now uh, this is clear right awesome let's quickly go to the equivalence partition which is very simple uh, in the nature people make it more complex i don't know how uh, so again same thing it basically says uh, okay it basically said we are partitioning the input into number of classes or partitions. So basically we are dividing, suppose similar thing is there, text field that accepts 1 to 0, 1 to 10, right? We are divided into three equivalent part. This is, this is like a negative part, this is positive part, and this is negative part, right? Let me use color here. This is your negative part, this is your negative part, and this is your positive part, right? So here, if you see, I have just added three equivalents, which is minus one in the negative part, in the positive part, in the positive part. So positive, let me make it yellow. Ah, uh, yellow. Okay. Click. Okay. So this is yellow. So here, so this is one and 10, right? So here you can say minus one is in your input. Six, you can take random any value between this six and the 17 outside the 10, above 10. So this will be your equivalence partition for this. So now you have total number of cases, nine test, test cases, six with the boundary value and three with the equivalence partition. Clear, clear, right? I hope this is very, very clear now. 
Okay, awesome. Please shut up. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the. Let me close this also. Let's move on to the decision table. This is very simple. Where what we are doing is basically a decision is created. A decision table is created to basically talk about the cause and effect of a particular test cases. So simple example. Again, we'll take a simple example. Uh, this is actually there is a particular rule. For example. Uh, we have a table we have some rule okay uh, to give the vaccination uh, we, where where we want to give vaccination okay if uh, the person is above 60 and less than this uh, either have a diabetes or hypertension okay so what we have done is basically we have created a yes or no kind of a table view okay so if you see the uh, row number one says the person is age 60 so there is no chances uh, less the uh, greater than 45 right and no diabetes no so the vaccination is allowed suppose okay and let's take this example where the person is basically greater than 45 but it is not it is not 60 as of now and there is only hypertension is a he has only hypertension there is no diabetes so vaccine is allowed right so this is how basically what you are doing is you are basically basically creating a tabular view of your decisions what will the cause and what will, will the effect on this? Okay. So to build a software to ensure that only people should get a COVID-19 vaccination, they have created this example. So these are your test cases now. So if you see with a simple rule with a yes or no, yes or no that we have basically allowed and all right, we have created six test cases, which will cover maximum combination and basically cover all the test cases related to this rule, right? I hope this is clear. Let me reiterate in a very simple way. There was a problem who will get the COVID vaccine if we have uh, greater than 60 or greater than 45, if they have diabetes or not. So based on that, they are allowed or not allowed to take vaccine. Okay. So those things we have created in a tabular form. This is called as decision based testing and it's really easy. And trust me, it basically saves a lot and you will I mean, uh, with 10 years of experience, I'm telling you, uh, you will face uh, multiple scenario where you have to create decision table. I'm telling you to create your test cases. Trust me. Okay. State transition. Where, where are you? Okay. State transition basically states it assumes again, assumes the software is considered to be have a finite number of states. So for example, you are logging in, there will be a successful login. So that's a state. There will be an unsuccessful login. There will be a state. So after successful login, you will have a dashboard page. This is your state. Okay. So that thing you are keeping in mind in here. All right. So we are assuming that there will be a finite number of states. There will not be infinite number of states in this case. Okay. And application under test, uh, if you see, it will go from one state to another. That's it. This is what they are assuming. And now there basically they, I have taken some example from the online where you have a login screen. Okay. After valid login, if it is wrong, you will get an error message. This is your state. If, we, if it is valid, you will get a wel welcome screen and a logout button. So you have a screen, you, you will see, right? You have a state one, you have state two and you have state three. So you can say, uh, based on this, you can create test cases. For example, success, valid, valid credentials, invalid credentials, and there will be a logout button and you can create your number of test cases here clear based on the states how your states are there for your software that's it now comes to the error guessing which is really really important it, it basically depends upon your lack of uh, level of experience for example divide by zero if there is a calculator related app that you are testing or for example you have a uh, you have a certain input field where people are entering zero by zero then again you know that it's a bug so you will add a test cases around it so there will be one test case where you will add an input related to divide by zero file not found. If there is a file related test cases uh, or a project that you are doing, then definitely you will add it, right? So here you will see it's a basically uh, the edge cases we need to basically add in the error guessing and testers can use a past experience and design your test cases around it. For example, if you see here, right, they have added a couple of test cases based on the errors. For example, requirement is their contact number should be number 10 digit number. All right. So what will happen if the contact is left blank, uh, other than numerical, they have added alphanumeric, they have less than 10 between 10 and there are multiple ones. So these are error guessing. They are guessing the, uh, what we call test cases. 
and they are creating test cases around it okay so those things now i i hope this is clear guys right these five techniques are really really helpful to basically create the test cases okay i hope this is helpful and trust me this is the best example <laughs> that i have prepared for you guys and trust me it will be helpful uh, uh one more thing i would request you if you want to know more about two more techniques you can watch the seven black box testing technique video you can just go to the testing academy channel and go search for black box you will find this one please make sure you subscribe also this will help me a lot near to 50k please do that all right i'll see you in the next video this is rose pramod